All right, well, good morning. Again, my name is Rick, one of the pastors here, and I want to welcome you again. Sorry about the mic in the beginning. You might not have been able to hear me. So today we're going to start our next episode in the series that we started last week called The Upside Down. Now we're looking at things that uh, Jesus talked about that in his time turned the world upside down, but for us, it can turn our world right side up. You see, it's kind of a nod to the Netflix series, Stranger Things, that we're looking at. And just so you know, I think I mentioned this the first week. I only watched about one series of that, so I'm way behind on that. So don't, don't, don't give us any spoilers, but I will catch up. So what we're going to look at today is a super concentrated part of what Jesus talked about and those words that turn the world upside down. He spoke these things from the side of a hill or a mountainside, and that's why sometimes or a lot of times people know this sermon as the Sermon on the Mount. You guys maybe have heard of that. Last week we started with the beginning, but we actually started kind of at the end of Jesus' talk. It's, it's like this. Jesus teaches these world-changing ideas, but then he says this. Everybody who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise builder who built a house on bedrock. In other words, he's saying in this world that is changing so fast, in this world that changes so unexpectedly, it's an awesome thing to have this kind of stuff that that is so solid that we can build our faith on it. That's what's important, that we can take the words of Jesus and build our life and our faith upon those words. But Here's the deal. It isn't just about hearing. You see, it's not just about us hearing these words. It's about us doing. You see, you can hear hours and hours and days and weeks and months of training on on what it means to be healthy, things like diet and exercise and getting the right amount of rest and making sure you wash your hands and making sure you have the right kind of mask. But if you don't apply that stuff, if you don't do something, It won't make any difference in your life. So you guys understand that, right? We have to take what we hear and do something with it. So today, we're going to encounter and we're going to hear some information. We're going to learn some stuff that is amazing stuff to learn. But here's the catch. It can't just be about learning more information and getting more knowledge. Because we got to take that knowledge and we have to do something with it. We have to do the hard work of closing that knowing and doing gap. And honestly, (laughs) I think some of the stuff we talk about today, you're not going to like what I have to say. And that's going to make it even harder to put the, the extra effort into being able to do and apply these things to our lives. So as I get into this stuff, I want you guys to, hopefully you've already done it, downloaded the study guide from our website, sp.church, and click on Church Life. You can find our study guide there. Um, The study guide is an amazing tool for you to use with your families, with your life groups, to get together and study the Word of God, to study the Bible. And I say that because I want you to know it's very important. Don't just take my word for it. We want you to dig into God's word and see what he has to say to you. That's what the Bible's for. It wasn't just for some, you know, pastors and priests and all that. It was for everybody, and everybody has access to it. So please spend the time, dig into God's word, and see what he has to say to you. You see, it's kind of important because sometimes, like today's question, there's an implied kind of question to what we're talking about. Jesus wants us to answer the question, what does it mean and what does, it look, what, what does love look like? Jesus wants to answer that question today. And Jesus points us to the answer by taking us on a little tour about and a talk about a slap and a shirt and a walk and a loan. You guys may understand where I'm going. You may have heard of these things before, but here's what he said. You have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say, Jesus says, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. What does love look like? Exactly what Jesus is talking about here. This is what love looks like. 
Now, I want you to, to do something with me. And they may be sitting right next to you, so don't make any eye contact. But I want you to think about, for just a minute, a person who has hurt you. Someone who hurt you the most. Somebody who wounded you. You know, that wound that goes so deep on the inside. Somebody that maybe broke, has broken your heart. Somebody who has always irritated you. And that somebody may be me. I can be pretty irritating. But maybe, maybe this person is from your work. Maybe this person is somebody from your family. Maybe it's someone in your family right now that's making this stay-at-home uh, time feel like a jail sentence. Maybe it's somebody you've known for a really, really long time, and you're so close, but they've, they've hurt you in a way that is just so deep. Maybe it's somebody here at this church. I don't know. But as you picture that person, I want you to think about this. How do you deal with people that you don't want to love because they've hurt you. And I think, or I don't think, I know Jesus is going to teach us today. Jesus uses his teachings today, and in his teachings, he does a lot of compare and contrasting. He looks at the conventional wisdom of that day, and he kind of flips it upside down to, to give us the idea that there's a new way, a possibility of a new life, a, a kingdom kind of life. For example, he says, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Well, that's conventional wisdom right out of the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible in Exodus chapter 21. And it says this, but if there is serious injury, you are to take life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. Now, <laughs> I hear that, and I read that, and I'm just like you. Some people are like, look, it's right there. When Nate annoys me, I can just smack him, right? That's how it is, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But a lot of people are like, that sounds so barbaric. That sounds terrible. I mean, why would that make it in the Bible? But listen, that's in the Bible because in that day and age, it was a different time, right? It was completely different from, from, from our time almost, if you think about it, because in that time, it was actually, actually limiting the amount of retaliation you could do. What it's saying is if someone wrongs you, it doesn't just because they did something insulting to you doesn't mean you can kill them for it or kill their whole family. That was a big, huge step forward in that day and age, kind of flipping it upside down. Because if you were wronged in that day and age, you could go out and kill somebody. It was crazy. But even with Jesus' words, flipping it upside down, it was still a problem. Because the problem is this, a hurt received always feels worse than the hurt given. It feels like we can never pay somebody back enough for the pain that they've caused us, for the trouble. So no matter how fair it seems, this eye-for-eye eye thinking, it always escalates. It continues to escalate until it is in total destruction of that life and that relationship. And Jesus is saying, right now, in me, with my help, there's another way. There's another way in Jesus. And then he paints this picture of what it might look like. He says this, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. Now, notice that Jesus specifically says the right cheek. And what he's talking about here, in that day and age, it was humiliating to get slapped. And he's talking about a backhand. So if I go like that, I'm going to hit the right side of your face. So he says, even though if you, no matter what they do in Jesus' culture, to publicly receive a backhand slap was so humiliating. And it would just be okay. Jesus is saying this. He's saying, okay, if you say you're a follower of mine, if you are following me, you're living in a reality of this world. And when someone insults you, and when someone just tears you down publicly and deeply, Slap or otherwise, your first reaction might be to retaliate, to hit them back, to do something to them. That's what the world would expect you to do. But here's a radical idea. Your honor and dignity are in the hands of your heavenly father. So ultimately, your honor and dignity are not at risk. Ultimately, you are not at risk, even if someone insults you. Now, since your honor and your dignity are not at risk, you don't have to retaliate. 
There has been no insult. You can take and look for other options. Now you can go to a strong, creative, new way and refuse to participate in the mutual hostility. So let, let, let's kind of make it a little more personal again. How do people who hurt you, how, people who insult you or demean you, how do you respond to those kind of people? How do we love those kind of people? And then Jesus says this, you know, and we're reminded that we have choices. Jesus says, let's take this other situation. If somebody wants to sue you and take away your shirt, give them your coat as well. You see, people, people in Jesus' day would have understood this right away because of the culture there. You have two things, basically. You have your shirt, a really long shirt that you wear. When I was in Iraq, I saw this. I called them man dresses is what I called them, but they were these really long shirts, and they would wear them everywhere, but you also had an outer garment. And back in that day, it was like a coat, but it was more like a blanket that they had to keep them warm at night. So you had your shirt and, you, and your inner garment, and you had your outer garment this big old blanket that would wrap around you. In fact, you could take that blanket and your shirt and you could use that for collateral to get a loan. But the deal was, your right was, because that was your blanket, it was made to keep you warm at night. The deal was is that they had to give you back that blanket whether you paid back the loan or not. That was your right. You see, Jesus, that was the Jewish law at that time. And, and Jesus is saying, you know what? You have rights. So Jesus is talking about your rights and my rights. You see, I have my rights. I want them. I demand them. But Jesus is saying there's a different way. There's a new way. There's a kingdom way, a way where you do not stand on your rights. Jesus is saying, and, and I think Reba McIntyre coined it best after hearing about this. She said, I got one word for you. Let it go. Right? Let it go. Just let it go. Be more concerned about serving. Be more concerned about serving others and being served. Be more concerned about your civic duties. Be more concerned about taking care of other people. Be more concerned about those things than your rights. Be more concerned about your responsibilities rather than your privileges. This is the way that leads to life. And those things are hard, aren't they? To be able to set aside your rights for the benefit of others, to help other people. I told you this was going to be hard, right? It is hard to put this into practice in our lives. But you see, we can be creative and strong in the work of reconciliation because now you live in the kingdom. Now you do not have to be a victim of the desire for revenge. You don't have to be a victim of fear that makes you run away. You have a better choice, a new choice, another kind of life is possible, and God will be right there with you and help you live it. So let it go and live it. We say at CR, there's a saying at Celebrate Recovery is, let go and let God. Let God take control and, and guide you in all you say and all you do. Now, Jesus, he gives us another example. If anyone forces you to go with them one mile, you go two miles. Now, again, the people would have known this law, you know, in their culture because they were under occupation. They were an occupied nation. Israel was this territory that had a Roman oppressor. Now, in that day and age, like I said, the law was that if a Roman soldier asked you to, to carry something for them, their heavy burden, you had no choice. Whatever was going on in your life, you had to stop and take that burden and go on a hike with them for up to a mile. You had to go a mile with them. And you know that out of all these different laws, this one had to be the most irritating, right? I'm right in the middle of something here, but uh, I got to give it up and go and help you. So Jesus says, okay, now, listen, brothers and sisters, we live in a new kind of community. A Roman soldier makes you carry his burden a mile. You see, you got to look at it from his perspective. He's young. He's barely a man, this soldier, right? He's from another part of the world. He's been plucked out of what he knows, his friends, his family, his life, and dropped over here because he's a soldier. And he's here probably poor himself. He's hated. He's dehumanized by you guys, by the Israelites. This is Jesus talking to him, and he's saying, and you treat him like dirt. 
You people abuse him and show him nothing but hostility. And of course, you do all this behind his back, right? Because you're afraid too. That's all he gets all day long, every day. And Jesus says, there's a new idea. There's this Roman soldier, and he makes you carry something a mile. And when you finish that mile, what Jesus says is, I want you to look him right in the eye and say, man, it must be hard to be you in this foreign country. And you look tired. How about I go another mile with you? What do you think that soldier would think? It would blow his mind, wouldn't it? Nobody did that for the soldiers in that day and age. It's a radical idea to help your, you know, your Roman oppressors. But Jesus is not giving a law here. He's saying, no, no, no. You do what you can. If you can, go that extra mile. He's saying, now in the presence of the kingdom, you can be creative. You can be different. You can be strong in the work of reconciliation. You can love somebody that nobody else loves. Jesus says, you can do that. He says, you can do it. He says, I can do it. We can do it. We can love somebody that nobody else loves. And then Jesus kind of summarizes all this stuff, and he says this. He says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. You see, God is saying here that he gives good gifts to the good and the bad. The rain falls on the good and the bad because God loves. And that's what he wants us to do. But now, this is kind of not the way I work. I'm embarrassed to say, but if, but you know, love my friends, love my neighbor, sure. But love someone who's betrayed me, love someone who's hurt me, not so much. It's kind of hard, right? It's, it's kind of in us to be that way in this fallen world, but, but God's not that way. God loves people. God loves people who love him. God loves people who don't love him. God loves people who spit in his face, who, who treat him like dirt. He just loves people, and he doesn't do it because he has to. He doesn't, it's not like God's sitting up there going, well, I created these stinking humans. I got to love them, right? No, that's not the way he thinks. He does it because it's the only way that has life and potential. It's the only way that life wins. And even though we go through these things in life and we have these difficulties, Jesus says to us, now I will be with you and I will help you because you can't do this by yourself. But we can get started. We can start trying to do it. Every situation will take creativity and prayer. And through the Holy Spirit, with his help, through prayer, we will be strong and creative. Because Jesus says he will be with us every step of the way. You see, Jesus, one day he said, if someone slaps you in the face, turn and give him the other cheek. Because on his final day of his life, the last day of Jesus's life, (laughs) we are told that his enemies surrounded him. They spit in his face. They punched him. They kicked him. They yanked on his hair. They dragged him. And then they would, they whipped him. And then they said stuff like this. They would slap him in the face and they would say, prophesize, prophet. Prophet. Who slapped you? Who was it that hit you that time? And in the midst of that, Jesus, if he wanted to, he could have called down 10,000 angels to smite them. Haven't you always wanted to say that? I'm going to have God smite you, right? Jesus could have done that if he wanted to, but he didn't do it. He stood there and he turned the other cheek the whole time thinking if they only knew, if they only understood, they would stop and follow me in the midst of all of that. He said, if somebody takes you to court and takes takes your shirt off your back, don't insist on your rights. He said, tell him, here's my coat too, because you know what happened to Jesus? One day he was surrounded and they took him and they took him to this court, this mockery of a trial, and they tried him and sentenced him to death. And at the foot of the cross where they hung him, the soldiers rolled dice to see who got to keep Jesus' clothes. They take him to court. They take his shirt. They take his coat. They take his life. And you know what Jesus says in the middle of all of that? He says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. 
He said, if a Roman soldier comes to you someday and says, and makes you go with them a mile, and then at the end of that mile, he says, can I go another mile with you? That's what he tells us to do. Because one day the soldiers came for Jesus. They came for him. They forced him to carry a cross, to carry it until he couldn't carry it anymore. And he fell to the ground. And it says in, in Matthew 27 that they forced a man named Cy Simon from Cyrene to carry the cross. They said, take this burden. You carry it for him. Just like the law we talked about. But at the end of that mile, he said, I'll go another mile. I'll go another mile for you. If that's what it takes, Jesus says, I'll go another mile. That's the one that we follow. That's the only one that has hope for us. That is where our hope is found for, for this, this sorrow, twisted, scared, vengeful world. And ultimately, this world will not be redeemed by a different economic system. This world will not be redeemed by a new political arrangement. I mean, these things are important to us, right? But that is not what is going to save us. When you think about the gangs and the violence and the war and the ethnic cleansing, the broken homes, the shattered hearts, where, whatever is going to happen, who is going to come? How are we going to heal that? And my answer to that is we're not. Only God is going to heal that. Only Jesus is the way. It's the way of the cross. It's the way that says the evil, the hurt, the cycle of hostility. It stops right here, right now with me, with Jesus. Jesus is the way with the Father's help now. And now it comes down to you and me to live this out in our lives and know that he will be with us. Will we just be hearers of the word? Or will we be doers? You see, our situations are going to be different. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. And most likely, nobody's going to slap you in the face this week, hopefully. Most likely, no, they're not going to take you to court and try to take your shirt off your back and sue you for your coat. Probably no soldier is going to come and make you walk a mile with them. But you'll have all kinds of opportunities and I will too. So I'd like to give us a, 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 a phrase, a phrase that we can use to make a difference in our lives, um, a phrase that we can take with us this week. And that phrase is this, here's my chance. Here's my chance. In that moment when somebody insults me, in that moment when somebody picks on me, in that moment when somebody makes fun of me, in that moment when someone overlooks me, it's my opportunity to say, Here's my chance, because I'm going to want to retaliate. You're going to want to retaliate. You're going to want to push back. But here's my chance to live like Jesus, to be like Jesus, because that is our goal. We are all called to be like Christ. Say it with me. Here's my chance. Say it again really loud in your house. I know it's embarrassing. You may be sitting next to people, but say, here I am. Say, here's my chance. You're going to be in a situation where someone makes you mad and they're going to insult you. They're going to offend you. But you have a different way this week. You have an alternative this week. Here's my chance. I don't have to live in retaliation mode. There's another way. It's the way of Jesus. And with Jesus, I can let go. I can let go of those that have hurt me. I can let go of the pain. I can let go of the humili humiliation. I don't have to be a part of the mutually assured hostility and destruction. The stuff that is destroying our world right now. I can stop. I can be part of the, the solution. I can let it go. Here's my chance. This week, you're going to think of a person who's hurt you worst of all, somebody who's betrayed you, somebody who's cheated you, somebody who's lied to you, someone who's broken a, a, a trust in your friendship, someone who has done something so deliberately wrong to you and you had to pay the price for it, someone who broke your heart. You'll be tempted to go all eye for an eye on that person, right? You're going to want to retaliate, but you have an alternative. Here's my chance. Because you know what? This eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth thing, all that's going to do is leave a bunch of blind, toothless people running around. 
And that's what we need, don't need in this world. I don't want to be a part of it. I want to join something else. I want to be on the other team because I know that the kingdom is available to you and me. We just have to live it out in our lives. That's what I want. God, here's my chance. Here's my chance, God. So Jesus said this. When we're like, here's my chance, this is what he says. He says, everybody who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise builder who built a house on bedrock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat against that house. And it didn't fall because it was firmly set on my on my bedrock. That's what it's all about, for us to be firmly set on the bedrock of Jesus. That's the upside down. That's the world changing words of Jesus. And it can change the world, and it can be set, and it can set your world right side up today. But all you have to do is want it. All you have to do is reach out for it. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I want to be a part of your plan, your life. Here's my chance, Lord. Let me be a part of you. Let's all be doers of the word. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, we come to you again this morning. And we just pray. We all got things going on in our life, but we want to be reminded that, that we have a chance to live up to you, to be a part of your plan for our life. God, we know that you are bigger than all our problems. You are bigger than our financial problems. You are bigger than our relational problems. You are bigger than our health problems. You are bigger than anything that this world can bring to us or try to shoot at us. God, here's our chance. My prayer is that that we would hear you today, that we would open our hearts and our minds, and we would put our trust in you. God, we ask that you bless this time together, that, that you would bring all of us to you this morning. Father, we ask and we pray all this in your son's most holy name. Amen. So, <clears throat> a couple more things I want to wrap up with before the band gets ready to kind of play us out is this, if you consider St. Paul's your church home, then generosity should be part of your life. It's living through sacrificial generosity that creates space in our hearts, and that space is a, pl a place where God can fill it, fill it with the Holy Spirit to use us to make a difference in this world. Generosity is a way to, to help us fulfill the mission of the church to live it out. And you guys have been doing that in spades. I tell you what, this week we've had people filled up that box that we have with uh, food for helping hands. You guys have brought in cash and the fill it up cup and a bunch of change that we had to, you know, get it all together. And we'll have, they're taking that to the bank to get it counted up. And we'll have a, probably announce that next week, how much that was. You guys are living it out in CASA, court-appointed special advocates. We have um, a whole bunch of people that just got certified to be these court-appointed advocates for, for foster kids. And out of the group that got certified last week, five of them are from St. Paul's. You guys are amazing, and you're doing great things. And my prayer is that you continue to do that. So as the band gets ready to play, I just want to say, remember that God is with you, and you can do it. In his name we pray. Amen. So this is a song that uh, it's called Believer, and last week we tried to play it, and it was so powerful that it broke everything. Uh, so uh, Facebook church is hard, but uh, we're going to play this song again, and uh, it seems like, seems like maybe God wanted us to hear it and for you to hear it this week uh, instead of last week. a bit different now now that my heart's been found nothing really feels the same I hold my head a bit higher I lift my voice a bit louder yeah something inside has changed I am a mountain mover water walker more than just an overcomer I've been set free I am a gospel preacher Heart on fire Freedom singing Testifier I've been redeemed I am a believer I know 
This week and whatever you do this week, uh, remember that God is with you. He's going to be with you no matter what's going on outside your house and no matter what you see on the news. God is going to be with you and he's going to be with you all week long until we're right back here again next week. We'll see you.